Hi everyone! Thank you so much for tuning in to another beginner lesson. My name is T.I. from Snowflake Crochet and for today's video I'd like to dive into three of my, well not my, but three basic crochet stitches. So these three stitches are single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. And once you could do those basics you are able to kind of level up into more advanced stitches. But with the single crochet what you'll find is a more tight um, stitch it doesn't leave any holes or gaps so with the half double crochet stitch you will get kind of um, what you get with a single crochet where it's not as see-through and the stitches are more closely together so if you do want the look of a single crochet but you know to work it a little bit faster I would go up to the half double crochet and then when you get to the double crochet you get the taller stitch you do get that see-through where you can just, you know, poke your finger through it and, you know, it will easily separate. But the upside of doing a double crochet is that you will finish your project faster. Obviously, there's triple crochet and things after that. I may go into those higher stitches in another video. But for today, we're going to focus on single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. And understanding the parts of a stitch and where you can work into that stitch. So, let's get into this video so when you're first starting to crochet the first thing that you need to do to start is to create a slip knot and there's two ways that I do that so first off let's leave about a 8 inch tail and you're going to put this between your uh, holding it with your thumb and your index as well as your middle and then you're going to take the end that's not attached to the ball of yarn and you're going to wrap it around your index and your middle and then you're going to wrap it around again and then you're going to kind of hold that end with your ring finger and now let's push this back a little bit because we're going to need to overlap okay so now you're going to take the back wrap and place it over the front and then take the one that was in the front and place it over that one. And then you're going to grab this one, let go of the yarn, just only pull on the two ends. And that's how you create a slip knot. The way that I do it most often is to just go ahead, overlap the yarn. So I usually just put my um, right, not my right, put my left hand behind the right. So I do like this, then I hold the, the crisscross area with my left hand, and then I take my right hand, go into that loop, you see, go into that loop, and then grab the end that's not attached to the ball of yarn, and then I pull, okay? Usually you like to leave a, uh, about a six or eight inch tail because you need to weave that in at the end. So then I'm going to take my hook, and for these tutorials, I'm going to be using the 6.5 millimeter. This is the clover hook. You can't see it because it's um, bright highlight color, but it is the 6.5 millimeter. So um, you're going to want to pull on the end that's not attached to the ball of yarn, and you're going to pull it so that your yarn is snug onto the hook, but still easily movable. You don't want it too tight where... Um, it's going to be hard to work back into that, okay? So you want it movable. And then the next thing you're going to do, and for right now, we're just going to be working on our chains, okay? So we're going to yarn over, and yarn over is just wrapping the yarn over your hook. Then you're going to hold that yarn over with your index and your middle. So I hold it like that, like on the nail bed of my index and using my middle to kind of keep that steady there and then I take my I take my ring finger and my pinky and I grab this end here so this is how my hands are so I create stability using these three fingers and then I able to control the yarn using these two fingers okay so I'm going to move that up a little bit so it could be a lot more stable. And then I'm going to turn my hook and I'm going to pull through that loop. 
So I'm going to turn, I'm going to yarn over, turn my hook slightly, and then pull through. Again, yarn over, turn my hook slightly, pull through. And then as your chain get longer, you then move these three fingers up more so that you have a better grip. So again, turn your work, I mean not turn your work, yarn over, turn your work slightly and pull through, move your hands up, yarn over, turn your hook slightly and pull through. Move your hands up, yarn over, turn your work slightly and pull through. Okay? And there you're creating your chain. And um, as you get more um, comfortable, your yarn overs would not be like a full thing like that. You'll just use your hook, kind of put it underneath, twist, pull through, use your hook, put it underneath, twist, pull through. Okay? But as a beginner, you maybe just go like this and pull through. pull through okay so I'm going to keep doing that for a little bit longer and I'm going to slow down this video So now we have a nice chain, okay? So let's focus on our chain here, right? So as you notice, your chains, if you look from this way, it looks like a V, right? Here's your Vs that you are creating. Here's the end of the yarn. And now, Let's say, for example, you're trying to figure out how can I count how many chains I have. So you're going to look for this bump. And then from that bump, you're able to see your first V. So your first V is right here. So here's one V. There's two V, three Vs, four Vs, five Vs. Then we go Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay? So now we have fifteen chains. Now let's identify the parts of the chain. So when you have your work down flat, this loop here is called the back loop because it's um, furthest away from you, right? So this is the back loop. So these, all these right here are your back loops. Meanwhile, these in the front that are closest to you is your front loop. Okay? Now, there's another loop of your chain. If you turn your chain face down, you'll see these areas here, to so these middle here, those are the middle loops, right? Or at least that's what I call them. So those are the middle ones. So you have your front, you have you have your back, you have your front, and you have the center loops, okay? So with each of those being identified, it's good to know that you could work in either um, loops. So you may be instructed to specifically when you um, work to work into either one so just be mindful of that so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and I'm going to start back by putting my um, hook into that loop okay do not count the loop that's on your hook as a 
um, as a chain. You haven't completed the chain until the loop, until the hook is in another loop, okay? Normally, we'd go ahead and we'll do our single crochet in the second loop away from the hook. So you see in the first loop um, from the hook. So you see this loop right here is in this area, right? It's in the 15th chain. So we're going to work into the second one from the hook. So this is the first one from the hook. This is the second one, okay? And you go right in. Normally you just go right into the back loop. And you'll single crochet by taking your hook, placing it underneath that back loop, yarning over, pulling through. You'll have two loops on your hook, and then you yarn over and pull through the two loops. Okay? So you insert your hook. Pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through two. So here we're just working our single crochet into the back loops. Uh, most patterns will not say work your single crochet in the back loops. They'll just assume that that's where you'll be working. So this is a normal, this is a normal way to start off is to work it um, through that back loop. So again, you're going to take your hook, push it underneath. So you're pushing it underneath this, making sure to only get that back loop. Then you're yarning over, you pull in through, yarning over, you pull through two. So I'm just going to slowly continue to do the single crochets all the way. to the end. Push your hook through. Okay, and then right here we see this is the last um, chain to work into because remember our chains start with after this um, little hill or lump here. You go ahead, push it through, pull up, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so that's um, our single crochet, and I'm going to do it once more. To start the next ro row, we're going to turn our work and we're going to place our yarn towards the back and here is where we ended. And when we start in the next round, unless the pattern notes to work into, because you can see we still have the V's here for the next round next row so we still have the V so the pattern could tell you to just work in the back or front loops but normally if they don't specifically say which one you're going to insert it into both so underneath both you're gonna go ahead push your hook yarn over pull up yarn over pull through two so you see this gap here that's where you're going to push your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Push down, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Push down, pull up a hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And I'm just going to keep doing that until I reach the end of this row. And yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, 
yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, insert, grab this loop, pull it through, yarn over, pull through three. Okay, so I'm going to keep doing that until the end. And of course, I'm going to slow it down for you so that you can see clearly. So for the double crochet, we're going to turn our work as usual, and then we're also going to yarn over as we did with the half double crochet. We're going to insert our hook into that first space. We're going to pull up a loop. We have three loops on our hook, just like the half double crochet, and we're going to yarn over. But instead of pulling through all three loops, we're just going to pull through the first two. Go ahead and pull through the first two. And that leaves two loops on your hook. And we're going to pull through the last two. I'm going to yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over. Pull through first two, leaving two on the hook, yarn over, pull through last two. So we're going to go ahead again, yarn over, pull through, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is the double crochet. So we're going to continue doing that, yarn over. Insert, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. So I'm going to keep doing that till we finish the row. I'm going to do one more row of the double crochet. So yarn over, insert here, pull up 
loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So as you can see, as you get more comfortable with crochet, you're mostly using maybe just the finger, like I just used my, um, my pointer to just flick that yarn over. And then most of the work is done with my right hand and that pointer. So I'm going to use this to show. So the first two rows were single crochet. So these from here on are single crochet. And the first row may look a little spacey, but as you go on, it gets um, a lot tighter. Not a lot tighter, but it gets tighter. And then these two here, these are half double crochets. So you see you get a little bit more gap here and a little bit more height with your stitch. And then the last two up here, these are your double crochets. So you see the gap is easy to go through that and the stitch is a lot higher okay so that's pretty much it for this video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it if you have any more questions feel free to leave it down in the comment section um, down below if you have any tips for any beginner they may see it and it may be helpful to them as well as don't forget to join the facebook group I try to um, be more interactive there, put a lot more stuff there. So go ahead and join um, the group. Also on my website, I do have a number now so you can directly text me if you have any questions and I'm really, really quick to reply. So text and email is the quickest way to reach me if you have any questions. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye.